uh, Dr. Tanrat, would you come to the podium? And uh, we are not supposed to go to sleep during your talk, right? Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tanarat. Uh, I'm working as a clinical pharmacist at the uh, Facardia Pharmacy, Mahito University. First of all, I would like to thank you, the organizing committee, for inviting me. And uh, in this part, uh, Amy and Dr. Prishaya will present uh, another aspect of pharmacogenomics of antipsychotics, which might be related to Dr. Sadiq's talk as well. For my job, I will introduce you as a, because I'm a clinical pharmacist, so I will not go in details about the testing of the genes and the genes, but my job will introduce in and uh, give you an overview and want you to know what is the antipsychotics, what is the problems in clinical practice right now, and finally, I will give you some idea what as the genes or the candidate genes that might be involved in your job or in your research. Okay, start with the definition of antipsychotics. Antipsychotics are the old terms we already know, neuroleptics or major tranquilizers. This drug is used mainly for managing psychosis or schizophrenia. So right now we try to uh, find a new drugs or many agents that classified as antipsychotics. In the market of Thailand right now, we have about 20 antipsychotics agents in market. So we have to know this is the risk of antipsychotics that we already have, but some did not available in Thailand. We can classify antipsychotics into two major groups. The first one is the conventional antipsychotics in the blue tables. And then another one is the typical antipsychotics in the red table. Both of them work to relieve schizophrenic symptoms as well, uh, including psychotic symptoms. Too. If you look to the meta-analysis, this is the recent meta-analysis by Dr. Professor Lodge that published in Lancet 2013. This is the line of difference from the placebo. You can see most of antipsychotics demonstrate the same effect size in terms of relief, psychotic symptoms, or schizophrenic symptoms. The only one that had dominated, uh, dominated benefits is cospin. That we already know, cospin has uh, many side effects. In other countries, including Thailand, cospin is classified as a second line or third line drugs for treating schizophrenia, especially in refractory cases. But in Thailand, due to the economic purpose, or due, call the, due to the economic reasons, cospid is prescribed more frequently and used like a first or second line in our patients. So the, currently, the treatment selections of antipsychotics are still a trial and error. You cannot predict the response, or you cannot predict the efficacy of antipsychotics in each patient. This is the problem why we have to find some things to determine or to be a key that you can use to select the appropriate drugs to individual patients. This is another uh, response that I personally prefer this slide because if you have one patient who has schizophrenia, or have psychotic symptoms. You have to treat in the first phase. We call acute treatment. You try to calm patients. And then you have to stabilize their mood, maintenance. And finally, the ultimate goal of treatment of psychotic symptoms or schizophrenia is recovery. We try to uh, put schizophrenic patients back to social. They have to work. They have to live with us. They should not stay in lonely in their home. That's the real in Thai. So the, how to achieve the recovery? 
you can see the figures along this time, right? You can, many figures do not show 100%. It means, as I told you earlier, one drug does not fit all, and one dose does not fit all as well. The reasons why. Why patients cannot respond, why the drugs did not work. If we look back to the basics of drug actions, PKPD from Cochrane and Dynamics of Drug Actions, this is the model that you have the drugs, you take in the drugs inside the body, the kinetics process will occur first, absorption, distribution, metabolisms, and eliminations. After that, the drugs will go to the target organ to uh, neutralize or to stabilize or to collect some pathophysiologic problems that occur in that disease. If we look back to schizophrenia. This is the model of dominatic pathway in the brain. Because we already know dopamine disabilities or this dopamine dysregulation is a major problem in schizophrenic patients. Once the patients have the hyperactivity of dopamine signal at the mesolimbic pathway is cause patients has positive symptoms or hallucinations, delusions, something like that. In the opposite way, if patients has low level of dopamine at the mesocortical pathway, it may cause patients have depressed mood, have the low cognitive function, low concentrations, and uh, also patients cannot work. If we go inside the detail at the synapse level, this is the synapse level. In the pink, synapse is the level, or the synapse of uh, mesolimbic pathway, and the Orange one is the mesocortical pathway. In the mesolimbic pathway, we already know that if you have many dopamine available at the synapse, it can act to the dopamine receptors, including D1 receptor, D2 receptors, as well D3 receptors at the synaptic of the limbic area and delivers positive symptoms. In the opposite way, at the mesocortical pathway, there is a less amount of dopamine available at the synapse. So that cause negative or cognitive disabilities in these patients. One receptor that we interested in is thrown in two A receptors, which is an autoreceptor at the presynaptic terminal. If you stimulate on this receptor, it will inhibit dopamine release. So the target of antipsychotics currently is will every every agents in and that classify as antipsychotics and will work by acting at two receptors. The first one is can act at the D2 receptor at postsynaptic level. So it can decrease stimulation on the limbic area and improve positive symptoms. This concept is as well uh, used to describe the irritability in autism disorder as well. The opposite way, if you block at the serotonin 2A receptors, you can increase the amount of the sign dopamine at the synapse, so it can improve negative and cognitive symptoms. This is the basic characteristics of all antipsychotics. But if we look inside into details of each agent, this table shows the receptor drugs profile of conventional or the old drugs. The major one that we already know is the haloperidol, is prototype. You can see at the two first column, D2 receptors and serotonin 2A receptors, which are the major target of antipsychotics, as we mentioned about previously. You can see both or every agents in antipsychotics can act to block D2 receptors and 2A receptors, but it can block to a D2 receptor with a prominent or high affinity, more serotonin 2A receptors. This is a major problem when you prescribe antipsychotics in this group to your patients. Your patients may develop D2-related side effects, including extra side effects, tardive dyskinesia, including uh, hyperprotectinemia. In addition, some drugs especially O1 can act at the other receptors like histamine, muscarinic 1, and alpha-1 receptors. This also deliver some side effects. Another receptor that uh, we already focused is serotonin 2C receptors. Serotonin 2C receptors is a receptor of serotonin that located at hypothalamus. If you block 2C, 
you can increase appetite. So in long-term use of antipsychotics, if especially the low potency is have high affinity to, to two C receptors, it can increase appetite or increase weight as well. The in, another group is a typical antipsychotics. It's quite a beautiful pictures. But if you focus on some receptor that I mentioned earlier, D2 receptors and sterling 2A receptors, all drugs can block D2 and 2A receptor as well. But in the atypical or the newer one, it will have a high affinity on the serotonin 2A receptors more than D2 receptor. Trust, the side effects that related to D2 receptor blockage is decreased. But it still have, it still have. Like EPS form, risperidone. Uh, where risperidone is here. You can see the risperidone is high affinity on D2. Another uh, concern is on 2C receptors. Many atypical antipsychotics has high affinities on 2C blockage, like crosopine or olanzapine. So it can block these receptors and also have a web problems. This is the in general concept of antipsychotics. Okay, once you already know, this is a table that describes the side effects. The concerning side effects of antipsychotics use, including the first one is extra pyramidal side effects. But if we talk or focus on genet genetic testing, are there any genes or there are any proteins that correlate to the occurrence of EPS from in patients who receiving antipsychotic treatments? You can see, oh, I think this doesn't work. Okay, sorry. I forget to check it. I want to show you one concerning side effects of form antipsychotics use. It's a long-term side effects. We call tardive dyskinesias. Tardive dyskinesia is an irreversible, in major of patients has irreversible process of the movement that occur at the orofacial muscles. Patients have their abnormal movement all the time. So you can imagine that you see patients who have all times. It doesn't work. They can't go to social, go to join the cups, go to out for the bathing. So if we can predict which genes or which patients can develop tardive dyskinesias, you can avoid to use the drugs that have with high affinity on D2 blockers. This is the one examples. Another examples or another reasons is the dose response. Because many side effects of antipsychotics are dose related or dose dependent. Most of antipsychotics are metabolized by cytochrome P450 family. You can see that ma majority of cytochromes subfamily who responsible for metabolizing these antipsychotics are 2D6. Some are 3A4s, and um, minor of them use 1A2. This is very important because uh, many enzymes or many drugs have a serious side effects, such as if we look to um, another one, uh, maybe cosplin. Cosplin will use 1A2. We use 1A2. And risperidone is used 2D6. I will use risperidone as model to describe. This is the metabolizing pathway that Dr. Sadi mentioned earlier about the risperidone metabolism. It's metabolic, risperidone itself is a very short half-life, only three hours acting. And then they will be metabolized by 2D6 in majority and 3A4s in minor uh, to develop a 9 hydroxy risperidone or pavipiridone, which has a ha longer half life. So, in general, you can take risperidone twice a day. But if you go to the practice, especially who work in the hospital, you can see some uh, uh, schizophrenic patients or some autism patients can take risperidone only once a day. That's work, because if you try to increase the frequency to twice a day, patients cannot tolerate it and side effects will be developed. This is the reasons why we focus 
they, or we pay attention to the 2D6 metabolizing affinities of patients. This is the data from Pro Professor Vichitra. Uh, she did uh, the study on 2D6 genetic polymorphism in Thai populations. As you, you can see um, in this column, about 40% of our group has a decreased activity on 2D6. About 5% have a no enzyme synthesis. So it means about 50%, give you a round figure, about 50% of the, our Thai populations, our Thai patients, has a 2D6 activity at the intermediate level, not a full function. So the first one, in clinical point, the dose is, should not be used at the full dose, like you see in the textbooks or in the reference. The second one, patients may develop some side effects that they cannot tolerate it. This is the point that we try to focus, that Dr. Apicia will show the results about that later. And this is a study from Korean populations. Uh, you can see on the risk predator level, the first one is the white height, and the third one is the mutated or the poor metabolizers. You can see in patients who with 2D6 poor metabolizer, there is a ratio of risk predator level increased. But the level of 9-hydroxy risperidone or pariperidone is, did not differ. If you remember, another enzyme will take cover, or will cover or, or, or overcome in this point because 3A4 is still work. So you, can, you didn't see any difference on the active metabolite level. But the risperidone level is accumulated and risperidone has a high affinity on D2 receptors. So in this case, your patient has a high risk to develop EPS or easier to develop. Another uh, study show the same results. This, the third bar is the poor metabolizer of uh, 2D6 as well. So this group increased the risk of EPS. This is the, another study to study on the discontinuation rate because if you have the genetic studies, but you can't use it to describe in terms of clinical aspects, it doesn't work. If you go to see the discontinuation rate, you can see on the red bar, this bar is, represents the 2D6 poor metabolizer group that we already know that this group of patients will have a high level of risperidone. So, they will have the accumulation of risperidone. The discontinuation rate is so quite high. In the, uh, another way, if you look at the patients who have the normal 2D6, but patients receive another medications that can inhibit 2D6, like receiving risperidone in combination with fluoxetine, another antidepressants that has 2D6 inhibitory effects, you can see the level of risperidone is so high, and it can cause this condition as well. So this is a quite a problem in our practice right now. So according to our knowledge today, up today, we can propose the candidate genes in terms of pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics that should be studied in each populations and try to incorporate into the selection of medications. This is the examples of the pharmacodynamics aspects. You can see many receptors or many genes that encoding receptors like D2 receptors, D3, serotonin 1A, 2A receptors is in our focus. Another table is shown the side effects, the gene or the protein that related to side effects. Currently, uh, I found a three points of side effects that related to genetic studies. The first one is the D2 receptors or the TADA dyskinesias. It's also related to the 2D6, to D2 receptor, to A receptors. Another one is the weight gain problems occurring with antipsychotics, especially in the new work group. You can see that many genes are tried to describe. And in addition, the serious side effects from cosplain as I told, cosmin is very famous agents in Thailand right now. Uh, many patients who receiving cosmin can develop a cytosis. And up to, uh, for 
currently we found only one gene that related to the increase the risk of a gangliosidosis from using crossbeam, but we cannot uh, describe in detail. So this is the candidate genes that you might be interested in and you may work further to try to describe the role of uh, genes in predicting the response or the determine the safety of using antipsychotics. So that all of my presentations that I would like to, as I told, this is the general principle and let you know how to apply into the practice or currently what are the problems that we encounter. So next, we will, would like to invite Dr. Pichia to share your job about the, whisper, uh, about the studies of antipsychotics. Please. Good afternoon, the audience. My name is Apishya Pungpes. Today I'm pleased to present my research. The title is Pharmacogenomics of Antipsychotic Side Effects in Patients with Schizophrenia. For the, out, uh, the outline for my, my presentation today is com composed of introduction, methods, results, and discussion. First of all, we, I would like to introduce about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a psychological disorder which affects a way a person thinks, acts, or feels. The schizophrenia is collected. They cannot separate what is real and what is imaginary. So we can find schizophrenia often begins in late adolescence or early adulthood. The symptoms of schizophrenia were classified into three symptoms. The first one is positive symptom. The patient who has a positive symptom will represent a change in behavior and thought uh, such, uh, that are usually not present, such as the delusion, hallucination. And the second symptom is negative symptom. The patient who has a negative symptom will represent a lack of feeling a lack of behaviors that are usually present, such as social withdrawal or apathetic behavior. And the last symptom is cognitive deficits. The, patient, the patients who have a cognitive deficit will have a poor ability to understand information and trouble focusing or pay attention, or pay attention on something. Schizophrenia affects around 101 percent of the population, and in Thailand, we found schizophrenia as approximately 0 0.6 percent reported by Ministry of, of Public Health Thailand in 2013. Although the etiology of schizophrenia is still unclear, but scientists believe that genetics, environments, and psychological are important factors which, which may cause the schizophrenia development. According to Dr. Tanaras, have already mentioned about uh, antipsychotics. There are two types, there are two generations of antipsychotics which are composed of first generation antipsychotic or typical antipsychotics and the second generation antipsychotics or atypical antipsychotics. Both of them were developed according to the dramatic growth of research in schizophrenia treatment. As for the side effects, the first generation antipsychotics have more serious side effects such as extra pyramidal syndrome or EPS. In comparison with the first generation antipsychotic, the second generation antipsychotics are likely, are likely to produce less side effects than, than the first generation antipsychotic. However, many reports suggest that the second generation antipsychotic or atypical antipsychotics 
can induce the glucose intolerance, hyperlipidemia, and weight gain, which are all involved in the increased risk of metabolic syndrome. The word metabolic syndrome is used to describe the co-occurrence of the abdominal obesity or having an upper shape and several metabolic abnormalities that are associated with the increased risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. According to the International Diabetes Federation or IDF criteria, a, per, a patient who was defined as having a metabolic syndrome, they, have, they must have a central obesity plus any two of the four following factors, that's including of blood pressure, hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia, and low HDL cholesterol. In terms of, in term of central obesity, is defined as waist circumference, and this table shows a different length of waist circumference according to the ethnic specific value. And in my research, I study on Thai population. I use the South Asian group as a criteria for identifying the patients who has a metabolic syndrome. Owing to the metabolic syndrome, the patient who treat with atypical antipsychotics will increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Moreover, the patient considered weight gain is the most disturbing adverse event and increased the risk of non-adherence. So it's leading to have a problem in public in patient health. However, not only patients who treat with atypical antipsychotics pre, uh, pre, represent the metabolic syndrome. There are inter-individual differences in the presence of these side, side effects. And the scientists believe that the genetic makeup is the one of major law that, uh, that can influence on the presence of metabolic syndrome. For my Literature review, I will focus on the polymorphism in serotonin 2C receptor or, or 5-HT2C and leptin, and leptin gene or LEP gene and leptin receptor gene or LEPR. All of these genes are pay a role in regulation of satiety. This diagram shows and appetite regulation in hypothalamus. We focus on serotonin and leptin pathway. Both of them are involved in the increase of food in intake. So if the patients carry a valine alleles that affect on the function of serotonin 2C receptor, leptins or leptin receptor, it means that this pathway of the pathway of decrease in food intake will be interfered and shift to the intake and shift to the increase of food intake pathway. As for the anti as for the atypical antipsychotics, this drug acts as a serotonin antagonist with 5-HT2C receptor, and from the from the retaliatory review. They suggest that if the patient had a 5-HT2C polymorphism, it will increase the risk of weight gain and metabolic syndrome. So from the literature reviews, on my study, I would like to evaluate the association between the polymorphism in 5-HT2C gene, leptin gene, and leptin receptor genes with the presence of metabolic syndrome in schizophrenia patients. This table shows the list of genes and candidate SNP that I, would, that I study in my research. I conduct research on a cross-sectional study 
and I have a co I have collaborated with Somdejopia Institute of Psychiatry, and now this project is ongoing. 119 patients were included in this in this sub in this project. All of them were diagnosed as schizophrenia according to the DSM-4 and received at least three months of atypical antipsychotics. Blood sample with high and waist circumference and blood pressure were measured. For the other details of patient history, such as duration of treatment, the date of birth were reviewed from the medical record. The, the, the candidates need were genotyped by using TAGMAN real-time PCR data, and the chemical parameters were measured. All of the parameters were analyzed for assess the association between the genetic polymorphism and the metabolic syndrome in schizophrenia patients. This table one, uh, this is a preliminary study. The table one, the table one, the table one showed the characteristic of schizophrenia patients. From my research, uh, from the result, we found the prevalence of metabolic syndrome was 31%, and the proportion of metabolic syndrome in male in female patients has a little bit higher than male patients. And in table two, we analyze the effect of absence and presence of CLU in serotonin 2C receptor and the, para and the metabolic parameters. The presence of CLU is mean the patient carry the variant alleles. After statistic analysis, we found that there are significant difference in the fasting HDL between the patient who absent of the C allele and present the C alleles. Moreover, we found the waist circumference and body mass index show nearly, nearly, signif nearly approached a, a statistical significant difference in both, in both two groups. However, we didn't find a significant difference in the leptin or leptin receptor and the metabolic parameters. In table three, so the result of the association of in, a, uh, in of the five HT2C polymorphism and leptin and or leptin receptor in the presence of metabolic syndrome. From the results, we found a borderline significant trend at p value at p value equal equal to zero point zero eight five between the leptin polymorphism and the presence of metabolic syndrome in male patients. For the result in turbo 3, we tried to analyze the combination of serotonin 2C receptor and leptin or leptin receptor in the presence of metabolic syndrome, but the result showed there are no significant different results. From from my preliminary study, I can conclude that the polymorphism in the 5-HT2C gene have uh, influence on the metabolic parameters, and male patients who carry leptin variant alleles have a borderline significant turn in the presence of metabolic syndrome. And for the last, my experiments, we didn't find an association between the combination of 5-HT2C gene and leptin or leptin receptor in the presence of metabolic syndrome. For the discussion, this is a preliminary study. Too small sample size may have a limit. The power to detect the different groups and I cannot sub-analyze it according to the name of drugs. And this study was designed as a cross-sectional study. The data on metabolic syndrome at the, at the initiation time of a typical antipsychotic treatment was not available, so I cannot analyze the data from changes in this parameter. However, some parameters that can be viewed from the medical records I, uh, may be useful for further metabolic syndrome analysis. 
And another limitation of cross-sectional study is there are many factors that are effects on the metabolic syndrome, such as smoking, diet, and on or exercise. Both of these variables is a confounding factor that may be interfere in the association between genetic polymorphism and the presence of metabolic syndrome. The patient considered weight gain is the most disturbing adverse event and is become to be a non adherence So the knowledge of pharmacogenomics may be useful for identify this high risk group of patients and maybe can help them for uh, use an appropriate drug for treatment. For, the, for my further study, I will uh, study another gene, other genes that involve in the metabolic syndrome such as serotonin 2A gene, COMT, MTHFR, or histamine receptor. For my research, I would like to thank all of my, all of my participants who take part in this project. And I would like to thank Ajahn, uh, Dr. Wilapon Unharasmi and all, all of the staff at Somdejaupaya Institute of Psychiatry. And I would like to thank to thank all of my colleagues as pharmacogenomic laboratories, Department of Pathology, Lama Tibadi Hospital, and this research was granted from the National Research Council of Thailand. Before I finish this section, I quote this sentence from the Thomas Sass, who, who is a doctor of psychiatry. He said, if you talk to God, you are praying, and if you, if God talks to you, you have schizophrenia. Thank you. I love your quotations a lot. <laughs> wow. Maybe I have the psychophenia now. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Great, great quotations. And thank you again. Anyone has a question? No. All right. So a big round of applause once again for Dr. Apichia Pongpetka. And thank you very much for Dr. Thanarat Sonsane. Both of them are director of divisions of pharmacogenomics and personal life medicine, Department of Pathology, Faculty of Medicine, Ramatibadi Hospital, Mahidon University.